We're back with our world lead live from Lviv, Ukraine. Ukrainian officials say there is new audio from intercepted radio traffic revealing Russian soldiers talking about killing and raping Ukrainian civilians. As CNN's Matthew Chance reports for us now, these recordings paint a bigger picture of Russian soldiers who are inexperienced and also seemingly guilty of war crimes. Again, we have to warn you, the images you're about to see are graphic. This is a war with mass digital evidence. Every Russian atrocity could be recorded. And as the Kremlin's finding out, every illegal order potentially intercepted and exposed. Intentionally targeting civilians, something Russia categorically denies is a war crime. Kremlin blames Ukrainian forces for the devastation and the bloodshed. But hours of audio recordings said to be of Russian soldiers communicating with their commanders and released by the Ukrainian security services seem to tell a very different story. One of civilian areas laid to waste by Russian forces on purpose. <laughs> And killing civilians isn't the only excess of which Russian forces are accused. Multiple reports have emerged of rape of young women, even children, by rampaging troops. One intercept records a Russian soldier in a tank regiment telling a horrified woman on the other end of the line what he knew. But these are not the crimes of victors. Time and again, Russian armor has been ravaged by Ukrainian forces amid reports of severely disrupted supply lines. And plunging morale among inexperienced soldiers, some as young as 18. Disturbed by the violence and desperate for peace so they can go home. But instead of medals, there are now growing calls for those suspected of war crimes to be tried. It may never happen, but forensic teams are in Ukraine piecing together evidence just in case. Already, there are thousands for whom justice must be done. Well, Jake, this conflict continues to be absolutely shocking. It's just that the conduct of those Russian sh uh, soldiers appears to be, well, I mean, it's just, it's just outrageous. Um, and U.S. officials say that the Russians are you know, doubling down on a recruitment drive, they say, to recruit upwards of 60,000 more soldiers to bolster their forces in Ukraine and elsewhere. Jake. CNN's Matthew Chance in London, thank you so much for that important report. Also today, a demonstration of military might less than two hours from the Ukrainian border. U.S. and Polish forces conducting joint live fire exercises, one of the most visible signs of the military ramp up in the region by NATO. CNN's Kyung La was there in Poland as military officials opened the exercises to the press for the first time. 
No words needed. This is the NATO message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. This is the first look at American troops firing weaponry on the ground in Poland since the war in Ukraine began. U.S. and Polish forces publicly showed off the might of the West in a bilateral live fire training exercise. One by one, Polish tanks lined up heavy artillery. And paratroopers dangled from helicopters, landing on a battleground that is designed to prepare for a war just a short drive away. The 82nd Airborne Infantry Brigade Combat Team, based at Fort Bragg, has been drilling with American Blackhawks here in Poland for weeks, deployed in mid-February before Russia invaded Ukraine. As the U.S. soldiers run across the field, a U.S.-made Javelin missile launches. It's a portable surface-to-air system that's been critical for Ukrainian forces in the war. What we understand is that there are two platoons here, about 60 American troops taking part in this live fire act. It's a show of force. We're about just two hours away from the Ukrainian border. The Americans trying to show that they are indeed working with the Polish troops. This is just a small snapshot of the greater U.S. force here. A U.S. official says approximately 11,000 U.S. troops are deployed in this NATO country. They're a visible sign of a larger military ramp up near Ukraine. A senior U.S. official tells CNN about 8 to 10 aircraft a day land at airfields near Ukraine, with weapons and security assistance material that is moved into the war-torn country by truck convoy. This bilateral drill ends with a photo op for the cameras, the two countries side by side. What is the message you're sending to Russia? We are strong. We cooperate with our forces from the all NATO. We are ready for an action. We are ready to defend our country. You may notice that I didn't interview any members of the 82nd Airborne. The reason why is that there is a blanket no media policy for them to talk to us. But we did spend some time chatting with them. And, Jake, just a couple of anecdotes. They've been sleeping in tents ever since they came to Poland here in mid-February. It's been very cold. They're obviously not seeing their families. But all of this is presented to us as just a part of the job. Jake? All right, Ken Law in Warsaw. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.